Friends, today is Tuesday, the 8th of December, and it's the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. And right behind me, on my, over my right shoulder, is our statue of the Blessed Virgin as the Immaculate Conception, which is, of course, the patronal feast of our cathedral and the patronal feast of the Archdiocese of Portland and the patronal feast of the United States. And so we have good reason and cause for celebration. The gospel <clears throat> today is that of the Annunciation. The Annunciation, Mary says yes to the angel's invitation to the plan of God that she would bring forth a savior. And Mary's yes changed everything. It's a kind of fulcrum of history. Mary's yes changed everything. The age-old enemy of that first reading from the book of Genesis was defeated and humanity saved. And if the church reflected on the role of Mary in the incarnation, the birth of Jesus, Jesus becoming God, becoming a human person, the birth of our Savior, it became more and more evident that no ordinary person born in sin could bear the divine son. Only the one full of grace, as the second reading told us, the Holy One without blemish could be the worthy mother of God. Only Mary, who was blessed among women, could bear the God child. It was Mary, we call her the new Eve, the new Eve who brought forth the new Adam whose passion and death would undo, would undo the effects of the first Adam and bring redemption to humanity. So over the centuries, the church reflected on Mary in the scriptures. Mary in the scriptures, you know, Protestants do not celebrate uh, anything close to something called the Immaculate Conception because they say it's not explicitly present in the scriptures. Well, that may be true, but it certainly is implicitly. And the church has celebrated this feast of Immaculate Conception from its earliest centuries, the earliest centuries. And so we look to the places in the scriptures where Mary is present and where she is present in a very special and important way. Mary present with the apostles at Pentecost. Mary present at the foot of the cross. Mary present in the life of Jesus. Mary present in the temple, hearing the prophecies of Simeon and Anna, holding these things in her heart. Mary present in the stable, giving birth to the Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. You know, there's a lot of misunderstanding. If there's any feast that is misunderstood in the church today, it's the Immaculate Conception. Many think it concerns the birth of Jesus, but in fact, it concerns the birth of Mary and her mother, Anna. And if Mary was holy in her life, the church in its reflection says over the centuries, in its liturgy, in its prayer, in its theology, if Mary was holy in her life, she was also holy at her birth. And in this, the dogma of the Immaculate Conception was born. From the very moment of her conception, by the grace of God and the merits of Jesus Christ, Mary was free from all sin, free from all sin, free at birth and free at death. And what Mary, the first disciple, received at conception, we receive at baptism. Mary, of course, is first disciple, first Christian, first to hear the word and to respond to it. And we look to her as the pattern for ourselves. And in baptism, <clears throat> in our baptism, we receive what she received. <clears throat> free from sin, free from sin, full of grace, children of God. Hold that thought on this solemnity. And we'll see you tomorrow.